This video is the second in a set of four explaining the Keynesian theory of aggregate demand, specifically the ISLM interpretation. These topics are usually taught in an intermediate macroeconomics class, and these videos are intended as a visual aid to further your understanding of the models. This video covers the investment demand curve, integrates the investment into the aggregate demand curve, introduces the IS curve, and provides an overview of the factors that determine the slope and position of the IS curve. If you did not view the introductory video, please follow the link at the top of the website. The IS stands for Investment and Savings, and the IS curve displays the points of equilibrium in the goods and services market for various rates of interest. To begin, we revisit the aggregate demand equation. While investment was previously considered to be exogenous, we're going to see how it relates to interest rate, so it becomes endogenous and loses the bar above the variable. There is, however, still a portion of investment that is unaffected by the interest rate. It is represented by I bar and called exogenous investment. Next we have interest rate, represented by the lowercase i, and as you see by the minus sign, Investment is negatively related to the interest rate. The degree to which firms adjust investment spending relative to the interest rate is called interest sensitivity, which is represented by the lowercase b. This coefficient can be anywhere between 0 and 1. Now we're going to examine this relationship graphically. Investment is on the x-axis and interest rate is on the y-axis. Typically, the independent variable, in this case investment, is put on the y-axis we will be using interest rate as the independent variable when we graph the IS curve, so it's put here for consistency. Exogenous investment determines the initial level investment. Again, a higher interest rate results in lower investment spending because firms reduce their investment spending to avoid higher interest payments. A lower interest rate means that firms can increase their capital spending and pay relatively low interest. The slope of the investment curve is determined by the interest sensitivity coefficient. A high investment sensitivity results in a more gradual slope. In this case, there is a drastic increase in investment spending in reaction to a relatively small reduction in the interest rate because of the higher sensitivity. The position of the curve is determined by the exogenous investment. An increase would result in an outward shift of the curve. Now we're going to incorporate this investment function into the aggregate demand equation. Recall the first video, we separated the components into exogenous and endogenous to arrive at this formula. Investment was previously grouped with the exogenous components, but our new formula has endogenous as well as exogenous components. The I-bar will go back into the exogenous group, while the interest and sensitivity coefficient will move to the back of the equation. Now that we have half the alphabet up here, let's review what everything stands for. AD for aggregate demand, A bar for exogenous demand, lowercase c for the marginal propensity to consume, lowercase t for tax rate, Y for income, lowercase b for interest sensitivity, and I for interest rate. You'll notice that all the lowercase variables are rates between 0 and 1. We're going to display this function graphically, and just as before, the 45 degree line where aggregate demand equals income is our equilibrium criteria. Here is the upward sloping demand function. Higher levels of national income lead to higher levels of aggregate demand. The y-intercept is given by the exogenous demand minus interest rate times sensitivity. The intersection of the lines give us the equilibrium level of national income. A reduction in the interest rate results in an upward shift in the aggregate demand curve. This results in a higher equilibrium level of national income. So the interest rate went down and the equilibrium income went up. An increase in interest sensitivity results in a downward shift in both aggregate demand curves. The downward shift is more pronounced for the curve with a higher interest rate, I1. This means the distance between the two resulting equilibrium levels of income is larger. Now we can move on to the IS curve, which denotes the equilibrium levels of national income for different interest rates. 
Just as we did in the previous slide, we will be graphing the aggregate demand curve for different interest rates in the top graph. The bottom graph also has income on its x-axis and will so show the different interest rates. Here is a curve for interest rate number one. The equilibrium level of income is the same for both graphs. When we put interest rate number one on our bottom graph, we have the first point in our IS curve. The second aggregate demand curve has a lower interest rate, so it's parallel and higher up. On the lower graph, the intersection of interest rate number two and equilibrium income number two produce the second point in the IS curve. This could be repeated for every different interest rate in this range to produce the IS curve. Since this model only uses linear curves, we need a minimum of two points to produce the IS graph. There you have it. At any point on this IS graph, the goods and services market is in equilibrium. Now we're going to discuss the determinants of the IS curve's slope. Holding other factors constant, an increase in interest sensitivity will result in a more gradually sloped IS curve. B prime will signify the new, higher level of interest, interest sensitivity. Let's watch how this happens. For I1, the higher interest rate, the downward shift is more prominent and produces a low equilibrium level of national income, Y3. For I2, the lower interest rate, there is a downward shift, but not as big. When we connect the points to form our second IS curve, we see that its slope is more gradual. Another determinant of the IS curve's slope is the marginal propensity to consume. As we saw in the introductory video, an increase in the MPC creates a steeper aggregate demand curve. C prime will represent the higher MPC. When we graph the steeper aggregate demand curves, it becomes apparent that the second IS curve is more gradual as a result of the increased MPC. The last determinant of the slope is the tax rate. An increase in the tax rate reduces the slope of the aggregate demand curve. T prime will represent the higher tax rate. The flatter aggregate demand curves produce an IS that is steeper as a result of the increased tax. Moving on to the position of the IS curve, an increase in exogenous demand results in an upward shift of the aggregate demand curve. A bar prime will represent the higher level of exogenous demand. The higher aggregate demand curves produce an IS curve that is shifted outward as a result of the increase in exogenous demand. This concludes our video on the IS curve. We covered the investment demand curve, integrated investment into the aggregate demand curve, introduced the IS curve, and looked at the determinants of its slope and position. Please watch the third video, which explains how to find equilibrium in the money market.